I'll start. My name's Mike Dixon, and I've been clean for 30 years now. We began the Life Ministry over a year ago, back in 2017. Life stands for living in freedom every day. What we do in ministry in approaching addictions is a lot different from uh, what secular organizations do as far as detox and a clinical environment, that type of thing. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, tonight we just want to come before your throne of grace, Lord. On being but I believe as a pastor and as a Christian that you really don't solve the problem until you get to the root of the problem. And the root of the problem in an addiction has a spiritual basis. And so I know the power of God is the power to set the captive free. We meet every Tuesday night of the year. It's open to men and women. In fact, it's open to family members who would like to come and just learn more about addictions. I started an experiment with drugs, you know, throughout high school. As I graduated high school, I ended up getting pregnant. Um, I was in an abusive relationship with my child's father. I got really sick, and they were giving me pain pills, and along with a bunch of other medications, and that became my outlet. I stayed on the pain pills for two years, and then that went to heroin. In May, Mother's Day, 2017, I lost full custody of my son. After I lost custody of my son, you know, and I wanted my life back. It's been over a year since I've seen him last. I went to the outpatient treatment. And they prescribed me all these medications, and honestly, the medication was making me feel worse than the drugs were. I ended up just self-medicating again because it, nothing was working. I'm proud of you, baby. All these secular programs, there's no real compassion and support there. Y'all want to fix? The first night I came here, everybody was welcoming. You could be yourself, and you could be real, and you could tell them what you're struggling with. I don't want to live that way anymore. Mm -hmm. My opinion is different things work for different people. And I don't ever try to push what I believe on other people, but I do share what has helped me stay clean. Once an addict, always an addict? Mm, no. Coming here has helped me. Because that's not what God says in the Word, right? That's not what I know from personal experience. It's July 4th made my year clean. If you got your Bible, turn with me to Genesis chapter 4. All the programs out there that are helping combat the drug epidemic, I applaud them. You want to talk about the counselor of all counselors. God's the one giving counsel here. We're in Genesis but chapter unless you four. get to the basis, the root of why yeah, that person is using, verse, then the problem is not solved. The first step is they need to be presented the gospel of Jesus Christ to get to the heart of that issue. We opened a recovery community center. That's a place where individuals can come and be in a safe place that are in recovery or even seeking recovery. We have been planning that for probably the better part of 18 months, and it finally became a reality. There's no other place like it. It's gonna be peer-driven. Everybody who is involved with it has put in a lot of work. The opioid epidemic hit hard in Nash County and the surrounding areas. Nobody knew where to turn, where to look. Families, mothers, fathers, they didn't have anywhere to go to to bring their children to try to save their lives. Coming out of rehab and coming back to the same environment and not having any support, I think was one of the most difficult times in my life. And for a, a short while after, after my rehabilitative services, I, I relapsed. I, I slipped back into those same habits. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. It's good to see you too. Have a seat. So you've been here how long? Um, it'll be two months on the 20th. So when you got to the police department with Lisa, uh -huh. what did you think? Oh God, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> but I knew that... Um, what kind of things crossed your mind? Uh, running out a back door, but in the reality of it, um, 
you know, the thought of what kind of life I could have that they send you to and all the meetings. I mean, it's a really intense program. It really is. It's 12 to 18 months. Yeah. But, so you, you, you thought about leaving, but then you decided to stay. Was there something that happened in your mind that you just decided, well, I'm going to stick this out or? Honestly, um, had my best friend from high school not been here, that was just God's doing I got for you. me what I could not have ever thought of doing by myself. So I've seen a big change, obviously, in the just a little bit of time that you've been here. Right. Have you noticed that yourself? Oh, about of course. You? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wake up and I feel amazing. I wake up and feel great. And it's 530 in the morning. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, I used to stay up till three or four. So, yeah, I mean, I'm asleep by 1030 at night. I mean, so, yeah, it definitely gets you ready to be a productive member of society for sure. And I mean, I'm eager to go back to work. I mean, we're, just know that we're both proud of you. Thank you. Uh, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> you have the hard job, obviously. I mean, yeah. we just kind of showed you the way. So. It's so worth it. Well, that's good. It is. And I so appreciate it. Well, I'm glad you stayed. Thank you. Mm.